Hello, my Soccer Universe, to the preview of the big one, the Champions League final this Saturday between Borussia Dortmund and Real Madrid. For me, the big storyline is that I hear so often, yeah, this is the biggest one-sided final ever since, and then it goes like at least 20 years back. No, it's the most one-sided final by the odds since last year. Just because the game was tight and probably Inter would have deserved a draw and to go at least to overtime didn't mean that Manchester City were overwhelming favorites in this one. More so than Real Madrid are against Dortmund currently. Just have that in mind. Just have that in mind. But yes, you have another final where we have one big dog in Real Madrid facing an underdog in Borussia Dortmund. A Dortmund side that nobody, nobody expected to be in this final. Uh, however, you could have guessed it. I mean, group of death. Dortmund won that one actually quite easily in the end. And while their run may have been fortunate thanks to a favorable draw, it was fully deserved that they went all this way. And as we will see, Real Madrid also probably was not the miracle run from two years ago where, you know, Magic Knights, uh, I would argue, in every game they were on the brink of elimination and just are a really tough out. That's where I would put Real Madrid, but it was not a, you know, a magic run. It was more one where you outlasted the opposition. But Real Madrid have been doing this in their great period before. It's also uh, the last hooray for two big German stars. We have on the Dortmund side, of course, Marco Reus, who you saw already in the thumbnail. And on the Real Madrid side, we have, of course, Toni Kroos. It's also two young English internationals playing at Wembley with uh, Jadon Sancho from Dortmund playing uh, Jude Bellingham from Real Madrid. They also played in, so there's plenty in there uh, for sure. It's also, as I said, you have the old Wiley coach in Giancarlo Angelotti against a newbie in uh, Edin Terzic which might also be interesting for sure to see how that works. But we'll talk about the game a little bit more in uh, this preview a little bit later. I would say let's start just with the basic facts. And for me, the first one is always the kit matchup. Uh, I don't have official confirmation, but I can only see both teams playing in the first team jerseys. I really do not like yellow against white. But since Dortmund played already against uh, PSG with yellow white, I would assume this is also the same thing for this final. Uh, although I probably, per personally, would prefer a Real Madrid playing in one of their darker jerseys. Uh, but then I see with the black pants for Dortmund. Don't look. It will be the cup home jersey, one of the uglier jerseys. And again, last time Dortmund played at Wembley, they also played in a relatively ugly jersey. Uh, now again, in a relatively ugly jersey against a true class jersey from Real Madrid. Also has to be said. So this will be the Jersey matchup. I um, already said it, London will host the final, the big capital of the UK, one of the major cities in Europe. I mean, I don't need to tell you about London. It's the football capital of the world, I would say. I mean, the sport was invented in England. London is the capital of England. And there are so many big clubs in there. And especially since the Premier League uh, was launched, uh, London has been getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And, you know, if you go to London, the, the sites are well known. I just want to put in there, yes, do, uh, do a Westminster, you know, with the House of Parliament and so on. Go downtown Tower Bridge, Tower of London, St. Paul's Cathedral, do all that. Go to Hyde Park. That's actually calm it down a little bit, uh, go Piccadilly Circus, blah, blah, blah. Spend some time in the British Museum. That's the one, if you would ever go there, this was the one place where I actually thought, wow, this was actually cool. And of course, visit every single stadium. It's fun. And you actually get to know London a little bit better by going to the outskirts and, you know, go to, uh, I was about to say Hyber, go to the Emirates, go to the Tottenham, Hamham Stadium in North London, go out to East London. Uh, yes, the London Stadium is not where uh, the old bowling ground was, but still it's a different feel. And of course, especially if you go to Chelsea, very portionable, then you go to Fulham, still very posh, go out there and, and you know, Brent, Brentford, 
get a feel for all for the city this it is as a football fan you're really cool there i never was at the stadium of the final which is wembley and the last time i was in london there was still the old wembley stadium yes i saw it from the airplane so at least i can see i've seen the old wembley uh another it's it's one of those great stadiums i have to say it lost a little bit of the charm to me by not having the towers i mean for me the old wembley stadium still holds something special and it's not only because of the classic cup finals and you know uh euro 96 when, when i really took to, to get in but the first time i heard about wembley stadium is uh watching queen live at wembley 86 and with the two towers there this is just for me this was iconic yes the arch is great and I think a stadium is absolutely spectacular. And yes, there's also a great Foo Fighters concert DVD out there if you wanted to see that, that, that one in the concert setting. It's awesome. It's a really awesome stadium. And I like the way they've built it. That is, everyone is kind of closely packed to the action. And of course, it was already uh, hosted two Champions League finals already. The old Wembley Stadium also hosted a bunch of these, but the new one, we had the one in 2011, the one in 2013, now in 2024. Um, Real Madrid for the first time playing at Wembley. Real Madrid have never won a final at Wembley. They've never played a final at Wembley. With so many titles, that's really, really weird. Dortmund at least played one of their two finals that they had. They played in Wembley and now they play another one at Wembley. Of course, they won on home turf against uh, Juventus in 97. So, um, Wembley, can I say more? I mean, it's about as big of a stage as it can be. And given that there's no English team there, I wouldn't even expect any crowd trouble or whatsoever. Uh, watch the documentary on the attack on Wembley on Netflix if you haven't seen that. For, yeah, this was not a glorious moment. I hope they get it right for 2028. So, this is where the final will play. Who will be the referee? The referee will be Slavko Vincic, who already uh, refereed the Europa League final between Frankfurt and Rangers two years ago. Uh, up, uh, when I introduced him there, there was kind of a weird incident that he had. Uh, I think he has grown a stature. I remember in this Europa League final for me, major whistle swallowing. And now he's in the Champions League final. Uh, doesn't look good in that point of view, but he has grown a whole lot. So there you go. He probably deserves to be at the Champions League final. I cannot really remember a really bad incident ever since this Europa League final, but I guess the occasion did get to him there. Let's look at the pathways to the final for the two teams and we'll start with Dortmund. Uh, Dortmund were in the group of death. A group that I know when this was drawn, everyone said they're going to finish fourth. They won that one relatively easily. Yes, outplayed by PSG in the first game and then played a 1-1 at home when it didn't really matter anymore. Against Milan at home, tight game. I think Milan had the better, better chances, but away from home. Yes, if Giroud converts that penalty. That game could have swung the other way. And this was kind of the crucial tie that they won both games against Newcastle. Comfortably so is the rock that made them move on. Then they played a tight one against PSV. Uh, it was a 1-1 away from home. Yes, a ridiculous penalty uh, given against uh, Dor Dortmund. But in the um, home leg, they had the one that PSV really came and knocking. And it was until the last minute. When they made it 2-0 and decided that one, uh, at that point, you really thought, how is this Dortmund side even moving on? Atletico Madrid, they did to Atletico Madrid what Atletico did to Inter. Uh, away from home, largely outplayed. However, they get late this one goal. And then, again, they take the lead. However, Atleti turn, 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 turn around and then it was again another comeback by Dortmund that over, just overwhelmed Atletico Madrid who could not deal on it again. It, hinged on the post and the post was also the major major helper against PSG yes I have to say the way Dortmund fought against PSG and especially how they kept them quiet in the first leg there was no Mbappé was not to be seen in most of these uh, games that was very impressive however in a total PSG hit the post six times so I'll take a guess yeah they had more of more of the game but I, I really felt for an outsider performance, Dortmund did really well and overall deserved it despite XG and everything else being mostly in PSG's favor. But when I look at this road, uh, winning the group of death was impressive and getting over PSG, I think you deserve the spots for the final. And also Atletico Madrid did not have a great season. PSV had a great season, but you know the Dutch league is a good level below the Bundesliga. So I can see that this was a 
tight one, but Dortmund deserved to be in the final. As simple as that, and they had definitely a Champions League face to them. If we say Dortmund deserved to be in the final, every Real Madrid fan will think it's the God-given right for Real Madrid to be in a Champions League final. This is our trophy. We gotta, we gotta be in the final. And let's face it, ahead of the season, you could only really point to one team that's really better than Real Madrid, which was City, which they duly played. The group stage was easy for them. I mean, six wins and yes, Napoli in the end turned out to be not a great side. The games were tight, but this was the uh, toughest opponent in, in, in a way. Yes, only on Berlin gave it their all, probably could have won it uh, in Berlin, but uh, there it was already done, all done for Real Madrid. Braga also was not much of an opponent for Real Madrid. So they had a relatively easy, very easy group stage. However, we come the knockout round, Real Madrid had it tough. I would argue in every round, they were not necessarily the better team. They were the more wily team, let's put it this way, against Leipzig. I mean, if Leipzig convert their chances already in the away leg, they scored a goal that was given for, you know, a marginal of side call or foul call or, or, or whatever. Plenty of chances. Real Madrid scored once through Brahim Diaz. In the away leg, uh, Leipzig had more chances than you could imagine. They should have forced at least overtime there. So uh, they were lucky to get through in this one. Leipzig fully gave, gave Real Madrid their all. And you see already, Real Madrid play against a lot of German teams. But before they played in the semi-final against Bayern, which is now... We have to call it a derby of Europe uh, in, in a way because they play so often. It's the most played Champions League uh, matchup so far. They played Manchester City, the big one. And it was an amazing home league. It was 3 3. Uh, at times, it could have swung either way. Real Madrid scoring more improbable goals, uh, but they were hanging in there. And then they even score early in the away leg. However, Manchester City did equal as did deserve, put a lot of pressure on them, but it goes all the way to penalties. Um, after it was 1-1 in the return leg, there was a huge chance for, for the Borani. If you bear that Real Madrid are out. And this is the thing. If you have your chances, we saw it against Leipzig already, Manchester City. If you have your chances against Real Madrid, you need to take them. Because Real Madrid know one thing. They are the best counter-attacking team and they can hit you on the, on the counter and they will score. They're not all the afraid of, of, of that because they have assuredness about themselves in this competition. So they move on on penalties. It was one of the few penalty shooters that we ever had in the Champions League. Now we got two this season. The one between Manchester City uh, and Real Madrid probably was a very memorable one. And then Bayern Munich. I mean, away from home at 2-2. Bayern Munich had more chances in that one. Real Madrid got out there with a draw. That was lucky. Away from home. They were, they were down. Real Madrid again turn it around and win it as they always do. As they always do. And yes, I would say that in the return leg round, we have over more of the game. But if you look at it in, on the entirety, Bayern Munich were not the worst side. Of course, what else? Now, now if we compare the two finalists, we can actually see what a mismatch this actually is historically. Real Madrid are the big team from Spain. 36 times champions. Dortmund have a measly 8, which actually in Bundesliga standards is the second highest, but still, it's not Real Madrid. They also won Cup 5, but Real Madrid have 20. Real Madrid have just a much bigger stature, and you know, 14 Champions Leagues to 1 for Dortmund. And that Dortmund victory was a major upset, so they have done it before. Uh, the one thing that Dortmund wins, they have a Cup Winners Cup. This was the first ever German trophy, but this was back in the 60s. 60s, yes. Real Madrid also won the UEFA Cup twice in the mid-80s. Uh, Head-to-head, it's actually quite tight. Uh, six wins for Real Madrid, three for Dortmund, five draws. That's maybe a little bit of hope. Uh, when I look at the market value, uh, that's usually the best indicator. I mean, Real Madrid are the, one of the most valuable squads on this planet. Over 1 billion euros, whereas Dortmund barely make it past 400. So, um, very much discrepancy. Dortmund's a younger squad. But I don't think this helps. Real Madrid is just a much, much, much bigger club. It's the biggest club in the world. Yeah. Now, in this final, I can very well see Dortmund coming out storming and Real Madrid hitting them on, on, on the country. For me, it, 
Dortmund have been carried by emotions through this comp competition. If they can get this up, I think they have a chance. But they need to be super tight in defense, which is a problem for Dor Dortmund. I mean, the way they survive against PSG is that they had a low block. And that's maybe the one thing. But, you know, Real Madrid will feel very comfortable there. And they have some very accurate passes. And with Vinny Jr. and Rodrigo outside... I just see it will be a hard time for Dortmund to contain them. For me, Dortmund needs to hit at one point. They need to uh, to pressure and need to have power for football and need to exploit the Real Madrid defense while keeping it tight on the back. If they do it similar to PSG, maybe there is a chance. However, Real Madrid are way more deadly. It is really hard for me to see anyone but Real Madrid winning this final. However, I said this already last year when Inter almost did Manchester City. I remember Manchester City were playing in a, for the first ever title. For Real Madrid, it would be the 15th. There is a certain, you know, been there, done that quality. Real Madrid are not faced by the occasion. That, I, I think the occasion will more get to Dortmund than it will ever come to Real Madrid. And so it's really, really, really tough to see anyone else but Real Madrid win. Real Madrid are of course favorites in the I mean of course Real Madrid have not lost a Champions League final. The last one they lost was in the European Cup, I want to say 1981 in Paris against Liverpool. And before that they lost a couple da da but in the Champions League they have never lost a final. Whenever they made it to the final, even when they were outsiders, they won it. It's a big, big task for Dortmund. I personally think it will be Real Madrid. What I also hope is that we will not get the fifth 1-0 in a row. I want to see goals in this one. I don't want to see it necessarily one, one side, but this a uh, 3-1 to Real Madrid. That would be my uh, prediction. If it's a 2-1 Dortmund, I wouldn't necessarily mind. Uh, but I think it will be Real, uh, Real Madrid. Uh, there is part of me that will root for the underdog for sure, but it's a Real Madrid. They need this title. And for Real Madrid to probably win it before Mbappé comes in, I think that will send a strong message and will put probably Mbappé in his place also. Okay, these were my thoughts on the final. Um, of course, it will be a grand occasion. Lenny Kravitz is in the pre-show, but you know, I don't want to have a pre-show to be out there. Should be the fan base, it should be singing, uh, and no big show act. But you know, we gotta Americanize it all. But at least we have a rock act, so that's for me always a good thing. Love my rock music. Uh, could be heavier even. In any in any case, please let me know how you think. How will this final go? Will we get an outsider win or do we get the fifteenth? That. In any case, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these. We'll review the final, of course, as well. I'll talk to you soon about more things in my soccer universe. Bye! Hey there! I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day! Bye!